you can access production at larger scales, which is uh, one of the bottlenecks to entry into an application space like energy storage, where you need to deliver very large systems. I think that would be probably the most exciting first application for TPVs. One new solution by researchers at MIT called thermophotovoltaics will blow your mind. What breakthrough advantages will it have and can it provide the energy storage solution we've been looking for? Let's find out in today's episode of Tesla Fans. Welcome back to the channel. Before we begin, please show your support by subscribing if you haven't already and ringing the bell so you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Now, let's get started with today's content. More than 90% of the world's electricity comes from sources of heat such as coal, natural gas, nuclear energy, and concentrated solar energy. For a century, steam turbines have been the industry standard for converting such heat sources into electricity. On average, steam turbines reliably convert about 35% of a heat source into electricity, with about 60% representing the highest efficiency of any heat engine to date. But the machinery depends on moving parts that are temperature limited. Heat sources higher than 2000 degrees Celsius would be too hot for turbines. In recent years, scientists have looked into solid state alternatives that could potentially work efficiently at higher temperatures. Engineers at MIT, or Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, or the NREL, have designed a heat engine with no moving parts. Their new demonstrations show that it converts heat to electricity with over 40% efficiency. It's a very competitive level of performance compared to the most efficient type of energy available today, which is nuclear power at 45% efficiency. The heat engine is a thermophotovoltaic or TPV cell, similar to a solar panel's photovoltaic cells that passively captures high energy photons from a white hot heat source and converts them into electricity. The cell is fabricated from three main regions, a high band gap alloy, which sits over a slightly lower band gap alloy, and underneath, which is a mirror-like layer of gold. The first layer captures a heat source's highest energy photons and converts them into electricity, while lower energy photons that pass through the first layer are captured by the second and converted to add to the generated voltage. Any photons that pass through this second layer are then reflected by the mirror, back to the heat source, rather than being absorbed as wasted heat. The team's design can generate electricity from a heat source of between 1900 to 2400 degrees Celsius, or up to about 4300 degrees Fahrenheit. According to Professor Henry, the rate at which heat leaks out of the blocks is proportional to their surface area, whereas the amount of energy they can store relates to their volume. They will take months to cool down, making them the perfect medium for storing thermal energy. The average battery energy storage capital costs in 2019 was at $589 per kilowatt hour. After considerable research, Henry and his team estimate that this system could store energy at a fraction of the cost at around $10 per kilowatt hour of capacity, while nuclear power is 1300 times more expensive. Capital costs for nuclear power plants range between $7,800 to $12,800 US dollars per kilowatt. Does the cheaper price make up for the lower efficiency? Well, let's talk a little bit about how much power that would make. These cells could reach that 40% efficiency mark, so a 1 square meter cell could generate around 100 kilowatts. For comparison, the power per area of nuclear power facilities is also about 100 kilowatts per square meter. So an array of 30 by 30 modules, about 900 square feet, will have a total capacity of around 90,000 kilowatts or close to 100 megawatts. The graphite blocks can hold enough heat to keep the cells generating power for roughly 10 hours. 100 megawatts per hour for 10 hours means it could provide a thousand megawatt hours or one gigawatt, enough to power tens of thousands of homes. Moreover, TPV cells can deliver energy instantly, the same way traditional solar cells would. This would make them ideal for grid scale applications. In a grid scale thermal battery, the system would absorb excess energy from renewable sources like the sun and store it in heavily insulated banks of hot graphite. 
When needed, the TPV cells could then convert that heat to electricity and send it to the power grid. The experimental cell was just a square centimeter, so the team would have to ramp that up to about 10,000 square feet for grid-level power. Meanwhile, a nuclear energy facility has a small area footprint, requiring about 1.3 square miles per 1,000 megawatts of installed capacity. TPVs take little space to implement, but they are as efficient as nuclear power. As of right now, a company plans to roll out a 1 megawatt hour pilot system by the end of 2022, with plans to eventually implement a 50 megawatt hour commercial scale system by 2026. They also hope to further improve the cell's efficiency to 50% by increasing the fraction of unusable radiation they reflect by 97 to 98%. Thus, we could start seeing TPV systems co-located at power plants or smelters to improve efficiency and absorb some of that lost heat. Indeed, the opportunities abound. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we need to see how this pilot plant performs. Now, all of this sounds super promising, but there are still lots of challenges that TPV needs to solve. Moving heat requires very advanced, complex pumps and systems to cope with all that heat. Moreover, the system is very expensive to invest in and is still under development in the lab. Plus, blasting TPV cells with such intense heat and light is another new challenge engineers haven't faced before. The main problem with molten tin is that if something goes wrong and the heat drops below the melting point, all of the tin solidifies, so the system cannot ever be allowed to cool down, even with sufficient cooling to keep the panels from overheating. When it comes to nuclear power, uranium extraction, transporting, and processing all produce emissions. The long and complex construction process of nuclear power plants also releases CO2, or carbon dioxide, as does the demolition of decommissioned sites. Moreover, if a nuclear power plant accident occurs, or otherwise known as a meltdown, the environment and surrounding people could be exposed to high levels of radiation. The 2011 accident at the nuclear power plant in Fukushima, Japan is one of the worst nuclear disasters in history. The reactors were destroyed by a tsunami following a major earthquake. How do you feel about this new solution? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Otherwise, that's it for today's episode. We sincerely thank you for watching and for all of your support of our channel, Tesla Car World. As always, if you enjoyed our video, please leave a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell to stay up to date on exciting developments in the world of EVs. And be sure to leave a comment down below to tell us what you thought about today's content. Once again, we thank you so much from all of us here. We hope to see you again next time. Until then, take care and be safe.